Before we jump in, I just want to give a quick shout out and a thank you to our friends over at Market Muse. Their support helps us keep this Slack community free for everybody, which is awesome. Uh, they make a really amazing tool that wraps keyword research and content optimization all into one easy workflow. In these videos, uh, you'll get to see the product in action, but some things we'll talk about getting quick wins off the board. We'll talk about the keyword research heat map, which I loved. We'll talk about using AI to help write first drafts. We'll talk about a couple other things. Um, encourage you to dive in, encourage you to check out the product too. They've been kind enough to offer our subscribers and members 20% off their plans. So when you check out, just use the code superpath20 and you'll get that 20% off. There'll be a link uh, to the site. And of course, we'll put the code underneath the video, um, but go check it out, uh, Market Muse. Thanks again for your support. We really appreciate it. I will get out of the way now. Enjoy this video and thanks so much. Take care. There's a couple other parts of the product that I would love to dive into. Um, the other is uh, how you use artificial intelligence to make content marketers' lives easier. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this has come up more and more over the last couple of years where, you know, it seems like the question is always like, is AI going to replace us? Mm -hmm. And it kind of seems like the wrong question it is. to ask. You know, it's more like, that that's like a fear-based question where there's another, there's another way to approach the topic where you'd say, how can this make my life easier? Or how could it make my output better? Which is, I think exactly how you guys have approached this. Yeah. So the way that I like to think about it is in the form of market maturity and product maturity. Um, I think it's the easiest way to put this in your brain or the brains of your coworkers, because our brains are wired wrong for this specific <laughs> thing. All right. right. And they're wired to judge. You judge a correction, all right? So I'll take you all the way back, right? The first time you ever had a spell checker, right? It probably kind of stunk. Yeah, um, yeah. But now spell checking is just baked into your brain. It's okay. I get spell check all the time, right? Yeah. The first time you saw a grammar checker, it kind of stunk, right? And you're like, ah, I don't, some of this stuff's good. Some of this stuff's bad. You judged it. You didn't really adopt it, but then it started getting better and better. And then it informed me. Yeah, and that was yeah. the experience there's, you know, um, gosh, now six years ago, almost, um, that was our experience with our first offering, which was optimized market muse optimized. We are giving insights that highlight for a writer, what it means to be an expert on a topic using natural language processing technology. So when that first was a list, people naturally said like, Oh, I feel uncomfortable with this. Mm. Right until you like turn it into a narrative and say, hey, this isn't just a list of words for SEO. <laughs> That's not what this is. We're not copying out of the top three results in Google. That's not a good plan for many reasons. That could be another three hour video, but um, we're actually analyzing this topic and telling the story about what it would mean to be an expert and how to differentiate yourself, right? And when people saw that and they could have that experience, they were seeing it as ways it amplified them. They were blind spots that they were going to have. It was stuff they wouldn't have caught on their own. And that's when we started to build out content briefs for people, which showed the topic model, all the concepts that an expert would cover, all the questions they would answer. And then it was like, oh, wow, this is a much more digestive uh, way to get this than just sending me, hey, go include this keyword. Because that's not why you were doing it in the first place, right? You right. wanted a better quality article. Um, and now we've taken that to another layer with, um, you know, where we, we build that content brief, right? It's, it's an outline. It has questions to answer. It has topics to include, links to what weave in, into the narrative, mm. make that narrative great. What that does is it creates a single source of truth for your writers, decreases the number of feedback cycle, less likely that for you to send your proposal. They look at it, they write something, you look at it and you're like, nah, this isn't what I was going for, which is the biggest nightmare in writing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody hates it. Hate, everybody hates yeah. <laughs> it happens a lot. Um, and I, I saw a, a large team's workflow that um, accounted for two feedback cycles. Uh, I was like, no. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, so, so you know, working with briefs um, initially can feel a little bit uncomfortable. But all, well, when you then realize you're writing, you're spending more time writing and more focused on production value, right? Than having to figure out, is this SEO'd, right? Or is this going to work even if I do follow it? or not putting my own creativity on top of the outline, which is the biggest sin of all. I want 
writers and subject matter experts spending time writing and putting their subject matter experts teeth to work. I don't want them doing keyword research, right? right? Why would I? And so then the next thing is I want to have my briefs come with examples of usage and I don't want it to be copying others. I want to see my narrative in a possible usage. And so what Marky Muse has built, we built our own platform of natural language generation technology. It's not based on GPT-3 or any pre-existing language model. We built our own, it's called Market Muse uh, First Draft. Um, it's actually going through a rebranding right now. It's going to be very exciting. Um, and basically we're able to plug in those guardrails, plug in that, uh, that brief, the topic model that we build when we're analyzing this concepts um, and train that model to write like a topic expert. And it's not to replace you. It's to make it so that the payload that you deliver when you deliver, hey, we, we know we should write about this. It's going to be this difficult for us to rank. Here's how much content we need to create. Here's the brief that goes along with it. Here's the outline. Here's the questions that need to be answered. Here's the links that need to be included. And here's some example usage, maybe that will inspire you, mm -hmm. right? You may look at it and go, I would have done it differently. And I type my paragraph in. I probably wrote that paragraph, even in response to feeling a little bit like this was a little bit off of where I would go. I probably got that onto paper a lot quicker. Oh, that, that's inspiration, interesting. Yeah. that inspirational sequence of an approach to this model is far better. And trust me, there's a reason why we know this is because the first time we implemented this, we implemented it just handed people finished copy. And they were like, whoa, no. <laughs> it was like, ah, you know, like, and, um, and it was like, you, what you do, you naturally judge it. Right. Judge good or bad. I trust it or I don't. And I love that about the human brain because what does that do? It makes us be held responsible for the quality of our sites. Yeah, that's cool. Every page can be a landing page. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so what we do is now, and it's going to be even cooler in the future, um, but we provide this as a lens of inspiration so that you can bring pieces in, adapt them with all goal of writing high quality content, comprehensive content faster, um, and actually getting more time to put your own expertise in play. That's cool. um, so yeah, I'd love to show you an example. Yeah. Yeah, that? I'd love to see it. You're making me think like the other day, your, your analogy about the grammar checker thing resonated. Mm -hmm. Like I, I use Grammarly for everything. And then yes. I opened up, I guess I opened up Apple pages. I'm mm -hmm. like typing without it. And when I realized it wasn't checking anything in there, it was very like, I felt very vulnerable. <laughs> like yes. I really yes. come to rely on this thing and it's just kind of works in the background. It makes my writing better. And I don't have, I could just focus on getting the, getting to the point. Yeah. And that's the experience for folks who use Market Muse Optimize. That's kind of our gateway, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And then they go into compete, which I'll show you. And I'm going to do a quick lens on this, but we'll go back and dive in deeper. But what Market Muse is able to do is go in, read every article it can about a topic. It will go out hundreds of thousands of pages. If it can find them, it will keep building. And we keep building in the background to make our models better and better. And it will build a model that says, if I were an expert on a topic, how would I cover this topic comprehensively? And it provides the relevancy sorted data along with um, expert usage data, because we want you to write like an expert. So we'll actually give a natural distribution. We'll also give it sorted by stuff. So basically what this is telling me is, um, if I'm going to write an article about patterns of neutropenia, I don't even know what this, how to say it. Sorry. This, I just like to, I like to show stuff I know nothing about because it illustrates that it's all the market means technology. If I don't cover cyclic, if I don't cover patients and therapy, it's not a comprehensive article. That's what it's telling me. I also see my competition and I'm going to show this again, but I see who is covering it comprehensively and who's not. Oh, and what are some, what are some things that nobody's covering? That's the way you differentiate. But the key here is getting to the brief. And the Market Muse brief will give the, the guardrails for the writer. Um, and what's my minimum comprehensiveness level? Word count that I can naturally and succinctly achieve the level of comprehensiveness that is being recommended. We walk through questions to answer, headers to consider, titles to consider, concepts to include naturally. Um, and even internal and external linking recommendations that are appropriate. 
We're using our internal linking model. We then bring that into an outline form for the writer. We give them as much inspiration as we can about the structure of the piece. So precautions is a section, clinical data is a section, pooled analyses is a section, hematologic adverse events following dose reduction is a section, Paloma one, I don't know what these things are, Paloma one versus Paloma two versus Paloma thing. But these are things, if you knew this patterns of, right? It is, this is comprehensive content brief. And what that brings together is the ability for us to train a language model specifically on writing this article. And we bring it to the user in the form of what's called Market Muse first draft. We've written, and this is a train model, it checks itself. It keeps regenerating until it's happy with its own coverage and happy with its own quality levels. And we will continue to improve these over time. And we provide this inspiration here that goes along with the draft outline. So at my disposal, I now have all the topics I need to include, a competitive heat map, that comprehensive brief that we just looked at. I can start to write effectively. I can bring in the entire section, Oh, that's cool. Uh, I can then compare it against the model. Here's some topics that were included in this section. You also see them highlighted. I can tweak this. Let's say I didn't like this. It, I, I don't know this. I'm. Yep, All right now. Okay, I got that covered. Okay, if I thought that that was relevant. But now I can go through and go, okay, I, I don't like this section of the generation. Um, now, just this part. I'm going to bring this in. All right. Uh, I'm messing this up as I, as I go, but you can see what I mean. I can drag in and drop sections or individual pages. I, I do my fact checking because obviously with every good generated content, you want to check fact checking, check proper nouns, et cetera. Uh, but this is the uh, workflow. And you always can track back to your competitors. You can put myself head to head against the NIH. How are they doing? How am I doing? I'm the same model. Uh, this is my number one ranking head to head competitor. Um, I can also put myself against Market Muse's ideal model. Um, you get a quick on demand sense of how well this is going to be. And then you can focus on writing great content. You can focus on production value. You can focus on you know, adding your subject matter expertise. And when you're done, obviously, I have. Um, Grammarly packed in here too, which is pretty beautiful. I love it. Yeah. So I get that double, double whammy, right? I can drag that for publishing. I can also share this. Let's say my writer isn't in my organization. I can share all of this with them so they can actually go without having to log into all of my inventory data and my other sensitive data. Um, so yeah, this is our natural language generation experience. Very uh, upcoming. We're going to have one that's actually built into the editor. Um, this will be probably sometime at the end of the year uh, where there's going to be some ways to drag your parts of your outline in and do more right ahead type experiences like Google Smart Compose. Um, and yeah, all with the goal of just getting more content out. It's still enabling your writers to be uh, applying their expertise um, and amplifying their work. We have one team that um, I, I just actually was speaking about this this morning. Their goal, they, they had set with their inventory, they were trying to get 20 articles out the door um, and they could only do four. Um, and through adopting these practices, they finally had their first month of getting 20 That's articles really cool. out the door and they all hit the quality metrics. That's the That's key. Really cool. we're, not writing, we're not writing garbage here. We're writing high quality, comprehensive stuff. So much of this NLG buzz, the stuff, when you look at it, you do judge it and you're like, hmm, right? That's that's not being made with marketing news. I mean, that's, and that's really the big difference. That's cool. So just another quick question about first draft. So you, those blurbs are generated. So you could just drag it in, you, you know, give it a quick read, fact check it or whatever, but that's generated, not pulled from a source. So you, if you wanted, you could copy and paste it directly without any concern that it's uh, plagiarized. It's 100% generated. It is, yeah, has cool. no possibility of plagiarism. It's also not built with a, a summarizer based model um, in any way. Um, so that, that has never existed. Um, we in the back end have grammar usage um, and plagiarism checkers. And we are, yeah, we're constantly innovating against improving those models, but also innovating against tuning them. Because I want that article to be as likely to be successful as, you know, the top sites to explore in New York City, 
right? Yeah, yeah. Which was another example that I saw when I was bringing up um, when I was bringing up these things. And the key is when we do have the, you know, the when we're able to build those models and build the brief well, uh, we're getting better outcomes. We're getting better outcomes over time. It's not something that happens overnight. You know, we have right. a lot, and we we will always be innovating. Um, there are drafts that aren't perfect, right? And we want them to be better. Um, and the key there is we want um, we want folks to think of it as a way of amplifying and not judging. And that's where brains are. You know, we got to reprogram those brains because sometimes, uh, especially with um, proper nouns, statistics, right? Um, you got to look at those and adjust them maybe to know what the, the real statistic was or, or remove those or, or adjust the language because, um, you know, we don't, you know, that, that's something that is still uh, a, a work in progress, but we'll be innovating on that next year. Very really exciting. Cool. Um, yeah. And so um, those are ones where, you know, when you're, when you're writing, when you're reading an article and it says, Hey, go to the statue of Liberty, it's 144 foot tall replica of the one that was in, you know, in, in built in France, you know, let's, let's say it's 152 feet, right? There might, that could, that can actually come out of a generated solution. Got so. it. Got it. Really mm -hmm. cool. I just love the idea of like that kind of like writer's assistant, you know, like keep an inspiration going without, without any um, sort of hint of like kind of inching you out of the way so they can, they can take over kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then the differentiation is also really important. And that's where, um, when you read some generated content, we're going from two places. And one of them is that initial generated, like low quality to higher quality. Uh, by the way, this, this market's changing every six months and fa it's accelerating faster than you can imagine. But what you're seeing now is higher quality, but stitched. And so stitching is basically where there's no narrative. It's like a, a, a small blurb that's readable and then another small blurb that's readable and then another small blurb that's readable. And if you're a writer, if you're a content strategist, if you're a marketer, that does not a narrative make, right? Yeah. And, um, and so what you're starting to see is, you know, that's why some of the applications like, you know, writing Twitter posts or um, ad copy are much more simply adopted. Whereas this, we're going to go through two or three, levels of maturation and it's going to go from yuck to pretty good short pretty good short stitched and then people are going to have solutions that have long-term memories from the start we built models that have long-term memories which means it keeps context throughout the piece it's one model it's not 20 outputs uh 20 blurby outputs because that's going to be really hard to weave together right. uh, into something that you love or that you your writers can be proud of um, and what you're trying to fit, focus on is having them feel like, whoa, this, this sped me up, but I'm also proud of the outcome. Right. That's the really key. cool. Really yeah. cool. Okay. There you have it. Pretty cool. Right. So if you want to give market Muse a try for yourself, you can use the code superpath 20 at checkout. That'll get you 20% off. Thanks again to the good folks over at market Muse for their support. Thanks so much for watching everybody and take care.